Guten Morgen, guten Tag, guten Abend. So let's go on to the next chapter, Kapitel 4.1, 4.2. We're getting to our indefinite articles and possessives. We've been talking about indefinite articles a little bit already, but now we're going to learn them formally. And of course, possessives, that will be very useful. Because um, once you've got those, you can do a lot more things. So we will go over the um, exercises from the end of the last um, unit. So we have meine Reise nach Bern. We have it on um, the left in the present tense and on the right in the simple past tense. So in the present tense, we have ich reise nach Bern. And you can see that's just the normal um, ending. We take off the en stem and we've got just the e. Ich reise nach Bern means I travel to Bern or maybe I'm traveling to Bern. And then if we're going to do it in the simple past, we have ich reiste nach Bern. And so you see the difference in the conjugations between ich reise and ich reiste. So ich reise, present tense. Ich reiste, simple past tense. So I traveled to Bern or maybe I was traveling to Bern. Um, so die Stadt ist sehr schön wie ein Märchen. That is, the city is very beautiful, like a fairy tale. And then um, you can also do that in the simple past. And all you do is, ist is the present tense, but then we learn the irregular conjugation for a sein to be in the simple past is war. So there's like, he, she, it. Es, die, er, sie, es, war. And die Stadt is like saying it or sie because it's feminine, it. So die Stadt war sehr schön, wie ein Märchen. The city was very beautiful, like a fairy tale. So you say was. Um, wir haben eine Konferenz. That's just present tense. We have a conference. And then we want to say, um, wir hatten eine Konferenz. So that's, we had a conference. And you'll notice um, you've got the en ending. So you can see they still have that en ending. Um, wir haben, wir hatten. But then the, the form here is different. Wir hatten. Okay. So, the university is sehr schön. That's just the university is very beautiful. But then we put it into the simple past and we say, die Universität war sehr schön. War. Um, and then we have, ich übernachte in einem Hotel. I stay overnight in a hotel. And so, um, this verb is übernachten, right? So the T, it ends in a T with a stem. And so, when we make the simple past, um, that's the end of the stem right there with the T, right? And then we would normally just add a TE, but um, then we would end up with two Ts next to each other and you would hear them separately. So you add instead of just the TE, you add the ETE, which means you end up with kind of a, um, a ending that um, might sound weird to say when you first get used to it. Ich übernachtete in einem Hotel. I stayed overnight in a hotel. Yeah. Okay, so then we had a few more. Um, warum warst du nicht auf Sophie's Party? Why were you not at Sophie's party? Du warst, so it's like war, but then also the ending there. Du warst. Ich hatte viel zu tun. I had a lot to do. Warum warst du gestern Nachmittag nicht zu Hause? Why weren't you at home yesterday afternoon? Or why were you not at home yesterday afternoon? Yeah, du warst. Why were you not? Not as well over here. Ich hatte Vorlesungen an der Uni. I had lectures at the university, or I had classes, or I had lectures to go to. Ich hatte. I had. Warum war Martin nicht bei Mittagessen? Why was Martin not at lunch, or why wasn't Martin at lunch? Weil er war nicht. And then, er hatte keinen Hunger. Um, technically, it means he had no hunger, but we wouldn't say it quite like that in English. We would say he wasn't hungry, but... There's just, um, it's, it's just a weird idiom. I think some other European languages do this as well. Um, yeah, in French you say, j'ai faim or j'ai soif, right? I have hunger, I have, um, I have thirst. So in German it's the same. Ich habe Hunger, ich habe Durst. I have hunger, I have um, thirst. So it's also, um, you're also going to do it that way in the simple past. I, he had no hunger. Er hatte keinen Hunger, but of course, when you translate, you can say he wasn't hungry. Um, it's possible in German to say, ich bin hungrig. You, so you can say noun, or you can say um, I and then am, ich bin, and then the, ad the adjective, hungrig. Um, so it's possible as well, but it's not like the default form. It's like the, the other version. 
So, ich bin hungrig, it's fine. You could say, er war nicht hungrig. Um, but I would say, er hatte keinen Hunger, is a little more uh, common. Okay, so now we get to our indefinite articles and possessives. So, um, the book only introduces indefinite articles now, um, but I have been showing you them for a little while, um, because I don't think it makes sense to talk about the definite and then not the indefinite until much later. But now we have our chart, um, and so we've got Ein Mann, eine Frau, ein Kind. Yeah, and the nominative. Einen Mann, eine Frau, ein Kind. Eine Mann, eine Frau, einem Kind. Eines Mannes, eine Frau, eines Kindes. So when we learned each of these cases, we talked about der Mann, ein Mann. Die Frau, eine Frau. Das Kind, ein Kind, right? Um, and so they correspond in the, and so it would be like den in the accusative, den Mann, einen Mann, etc. Um, so this is just a chart that shows only the indefinite articles. Um, and then there's no, they don't list the plural here because you can't really make plurals with indefinite articles. Um, but it is important, there are endings when you go into the possessives, which is what we're doing in this unit. So here are the indefinite articles um, along with the definite articles, right? So der Apfel, ein Apfel. This is nominative, right? Die, die Banane, eine Banane, das Auto, ein Auto, die Blumen, and then just leave it off for the indefinite type situation. This is all the nominative, right? And then um, we look at some negatives. So to make the negative, you want to say not a or no, kein, then um, you just put the k at the front of whatever the ein would be. It's, if it's ein Mann, then it becomes kein Mann. Eine Frau, keine Frau. Ein Kind, kein Kind. And then see, it would be like einem Mann, and it becomes keinem Mann. So just uh, stick the k at the front of the ein word, and that's how you get your negative. Um, except for now it's possible to do it in the plural, right? So we had this chart where there's no, they don't put the plural here because you can't say a children or like a women or a men, like it doesn't work that way because it implies a singular one. But if we're gonna say negative, then you can say no children or no women or no men. So because um, it's now possible to, to say it like in the negative and then do the plural, you do need to learn these endings. Um, and they they are, as you might expect, um, it sort of matches the the um, uh, like the D uh, in the definite article for um, it would be like D kinda if it were definite article, right? Um, so you have like the, the E at the end of that one. Um, so kinda kinda no children, and then kinda kinda no children for nominative and for accusative, and then keinen kindern in the dative, because if you think about how it would be in the definite article, it would be um, den kindern, to the children or for the children. So um, den kindern, you can see that n actually shows up here as well. And then if you think about in the genitive um, plural, it would be der kinder of the children, der kinder. And so you see that r showing up here as well in the indefinite article. Yeah. So these they don't show up quite as often um, because you can't do them, you can only do them in the negative and in the possessives, but you do need to recognize them because they will show up. So we can look, for example, and these are all in the nominative. Der Apfel, ein Apfel, kein Apfel. We just put the K at the front to make a negative. Die Banane, eine Banane, keine Banane. Eine, keine. Ein Auto, kein Auto. And then you would leave it off here because you can't say a flowers, but you can't say no flowers. So then we have to learn that it's keine here. Keine Blumen. No flowers. But here it matches D and keine. So you can kind of see where that comes from. Okay, then we had this one from before. Das ist kein Mond. Das ist eine Raumstation. This is my favorite example from Star Wars. So that that that's no moon or that is not a moon. It's a space station. So um, that das ist kein Mond would be yeah. Das ist der Apfel. Das ist ein Apfel. Or das ist kein Mond. This is this is the apple. This is an apple. That is no moon. It's not a moon, right? Or we could say, das ist die Banane, das ist eine Banane, das ist keine Katze. That's no cat. Oh, that's not a cat. It's a banana. Das ist das Auto, das ist ein Auto, das ist kein Haus. It is definitely not a house. It is a car. 
Das sind die Blumen. These are the flowers. Das sind Blumen. These are flowers. Das sind keine Autos. These are not cars. These are no cars. These are flowers. Yeah. Okay, so now we just have to remember um, all these endings because then you put the K in the front of any of these ions and make the negative. Um, now we're going to get into the possessive pronouns. So first we look, we remember what our regular pronouns are. Regular pronouns is just I, you, he, she, it, we, y'all, they, you formal, right? So ich, I. Do you? These are just. Um, if you're going to replace someone's name with a with a pronoun, this is these are pronouns you use, right? Um, or you replace a regular noun, like the table becomes the tisch becomes er, right? Um, so those are regular pronouns. But now we're looking at possessive pronouns, and these are um, a little different, right? So we have mine, which would be my, dein, your for informal. Sein for his, and then ihr for her, belonging to her, and then unsa, our, belonging to us, euer, y'all, belonging to, but y'alls, basically, belonging to you all. So if you would normally call them ihr, see how it's ihr right here, talking to y'all, and then the possessive is y'alls, belonging to you, plural people, euer. And then ia means there, belonging to them. And then um, ia for both singular and plural is formal, um, belonging to you, your. So the tricky part in the beginning for possessive pronouns is that um, there's some overlap where you get ia in a normal pronoun means um, you all, y'all. But then when we go to our possessives, ia means her, or there, or with capital I, belonging to you. So, um, and then ia, this one changes to oya in the possessive. So, um, it's when you see ia, you have to see, you have to use the rest of the sentence to know whether it means y'all as a normal pronoun, y'all as a normal pronoun, or ia, ia as a possessive pronoun. And the way you can tell is because these will have a noun following it. It'll be like mein Haus, dein Haus, sein Haus, ihr Haus, right? So when you say ihr Haus, you got a possessive, and then whatever is being possessed, the noun. Um, but if you had ihr as a regular pronoun, it would be like ihr seid, y'all are. You would have a verb. It, um, it might not follow it exactly, but you would you would be able to tell that ia is standing alone, and then there's a verb involved somewhere, right? But then with the possessive, you're gonna have the noun um, right after it. So that's how you can tell. But it's important to um, really get clear on what the regular pronouns are versus the possessive pronouns so that you don't mix up. Um, when you translate ia, it's you really gotta be careful about what's going on. Okay, so um, these are the possessive pronouns. We have mine, and then you have the ending, right? Dein, sein, ihr, and then it says it says his, it's as in um, a, an inanimate object that has grammatically masculine gender would be its, right? And then an inanimate object that is feminine would be its. Unsa, euer, ihr, meaning there, and then ihr, meaning your. So here we have these again. So we have ein Apfel becomes mein Apfel. Eine Banana becomes meine Banana. Ein Auto, mein Auto. And then of course, mine human. So those are the um, nominative ones. And then we can look at um, what happens when you are um, putting different nouns after your possessives, right? So mein Vater, that's just my father. Father is masculine, der Vater. So you say mein Vater. And then what happens when you want to talk about Mutter? Mutter is feminine. So you say meine Mutter. And then for neuter, mein Kind, and then for plural, meine Kinder. Um, and then we can say dein Vater, masculine, deine Mutter, feminine, dein Kind, deine Kinder. So the feminine is going to get this E, and then the plural is going to get this E. Sein Vater, that's going to be his father. Sein Vater, his father. Seine Mutter, sein Kind, seine Kinder. 
So the thing is, um, sometimes people get um, a little confused because Zahain is masculine in a sense because it means his belonging to him, right? But then you get Mota here, which is feminine. And um, it's like uh, sometimes hard to parse out like what part refers to what. So we'll have more examples on this, but basically um, this base form refers to the person who possesses. And then the ending refers, the ending has to match the noun that comes after. So since this is feminine, it gets this E. It doesn't matter who, this person has a gender and this person has a gender. And this ending is determined by this one, not this one here. Okay. Ihr Vater is then her father. Ihre Mutter, her mother. Ihr Kind, her child. Ihre Kinder, her children. And then, unser Vater, our father. Unsere Mutter, our mother. Unser Kind, our child. Unsere Kinder, our children. Then, euer Vater, eure Mutter. So what happens here is um, euer is the base form. And then we're going to add an E. But then what happens is uh, this E in the middle disappears because it would be E-R-E. -E. But um, especially because the R isn't a very strong consonant to begin with. So um, it just gets to sound too vowel -y, right? So um, that, that E that would be in the middle there disappears. And you, we add the E at the end. Eure Mutter. Euer Kind, y'all's child. Euer Kinder is then um, your y'all's children. Children belong to you all. Okay. Ihr Vater, your, uh, which would be then. So we did Euer. Now we're at Ihr, and this is their, belonging to them. So Ihr Vater, their father. Ihre Mutter, their mother. Ihr Kind, their child. Ihre Kinder, their children. And then we've got the capital I, which is, of course, you formal. So, ihr Vater, meaning your father formal. Ihre Mutter, ihr Kind, ihre Kinder, your children. Okay, so we can notice how the possessive pronoun endings match the indefinite article endings. So, if you have dem Vater and einem Vater in the dative, then in all of these different possessives, you're going to have the endings that match the ein. So einem Vater, meinem Vater, deinem Vater, ihrem Vater, seinem Vater, ihrem, unserem, eurem. Yeah, so this chart lists out all the dative ones, but it goes for every case and every, um, every uh, gender of the noun that's going to come after. So all you have to do is pretend that it's ein and then take whatever ending you would have there and so with meinem and deinem, all you have to do is put the M and the D at the front. But then with ihr and unsa and euer, then they, it doesn't like rhyme the same way. So it's not quite as obvious, but it's still adding the same ending. Yeah. So all of these are going to have this matching endings. Okay. So yeah, here those are again. So definitely commit all of these to memory because it can um, be really... Uh, confusing when you're translating if you if you can't navigate these. So then we've got um, some more examples where you get einen, meinen, um, and then something like the the plural is important to note, right? Because in, normally in this chart we wouldn't have so we have d d den we had that already, but you can't have an indefinite article um, in the plural, but you can have a possessive. And so for that, you need to know these endings. Meine Kinder, meine Kinder, and then meinen Kinder, and it matches that right there. So this one especially um, uh, is new with when you learn possessives. Okay, so let's look at these just to help understand more what, what's happening. Sie hat ihren Apfel is she has her apple. The first part of the possessive pronoun matches the person who possesses. So sie and her, and ia is like she and her, belonging to her. So those two match. But the ending matches the noun that is possessed, so apfel is masculine, so um, the reason it's ihren is because it's masculine accusative. So these two match, and these two match. And then ich besuche meinen Onkel is I visit my uncle, and then what's happening is ich and mein, those two, 
those two go together. And then we have this masculine accusative ending because it's the direct object and onko is masculine. And so it doesn't matter what the gender of this person is, like ich and mine, like could be could be any gender, but the gender we need for the ending is this this gender of this noun. Er besucht seine Tante, so er is he, and then sein is his, and then we choose our ending based on this person, right? And this is this is um feminine, so we get the e ending. Wir lesen unserem Kind eine Geschichte. So wir and unsa, we and are, and then we choose this ending based on the gender and case of this. So kind is neuter, and because it's the indirect object, we're going to want that dative case. Here's the dative, unserem kind. So this is we read our child a story. That's um, we read a story to our child. That's why it's an indirect object. Sie schreibt ihrem Freund einen Brief. She writes to her friend or boyfriend a letter. She writes her friend a letter. So sie and ihr, she and her. And then um, it's an indirect object again. So we want our masculine indirect object um, dative right here, ihrem Freund. Sie gibt ihrer Freundin ein Geschenk. Now we've got sie uh, and ihr, so she and her again. She gives her friend a present, and this is feminine. We've got two feminines, actually. And so this um, is for her, and then this is um, saying to the friend, and it matches the dative feminine that we're going to need right here. Ich schenke meiner Mutter Opernkarten. I give my mother opera tickets. So then ich and mine go together. And then it's, this is actually the same. We want a feminine dative. Indirect object, feminine. Ich schenke meiner Mutter auf Karten. Okay, so here we have the chart again. Just to make sure that you're familiar with these and you're comfortable enough to recognize what case you need to be in and uh, what matches with what. So we have some more um, examples from the book. So kein is kein and possessive pronouns. That's what we've been doing. And then there's some other words that you're going to want to watch out for. Um, that are quote unquote limiting adjectives, and um, they go before nouns and they um, they uh, limit them. You could say they say they say something about the amount um, in the way that um, ein does, right? So andere means other or different. Andere Länder, andere Sitten, different countries, different customs. So it's in the plural, and you see it has that same plural ending. It would be like <clears throat> it would be like meine Länder, andere Länder, same ending. Einige means some. Einige Länder haben keine privaten Universitäten. Some countries have no private universities. So see, it's in the plural and it's got that same ending. You might say, meine Länder, my countries, right? Um, so then einige. Mehrere is always plural as well. It just means several. Mehrere Universitäten haben zu viele Studenten. And then, so I, ein can uh, it can take any gender afterwards, right? So the ein would um, change based on what the gender is here, and this is just neuter. So so I ein Problem, such a problem. Um, this isn't terribly common, but you might find it. Viele means many. So since it applies plural, it's always going to have that plural ending. Viele Studenten haben keine Wohnung. Many students. You, I mean, viel exists as well without that e, but it means much instead of many, right? Or it means a lot or much, few. But then viele with the plural means many. Was für ein, um, so what kind of a, and then um, depending on what the gender is after, gender and case, you're gonna wanna change that. So for in the example, they have a feminine, Universität is feminine. Was für eine Universität suchen Sie? What kind of a university are you looking for? And then welch ein is very similar to solch ein. Um, what a dilemma. Welch ein dilemma. Yeah, dilemma is neuter, so that's why you don't see an ending there. But if it were feminine, it would it would add an ending like this one. Um, okay, and then weniger is, um, it implies plural, not, not too many, but still plural, a few. Weniger Leute haben eine gute Lösung. Few people have a good solution. Weniger. It's always going to have that E because it implies plural, but um, it can exist as just wenig without the E, and that would be like um, uh, 
not very much. It's like the opposite of few, a lot, and then wenig, not very much. Okay, so now we have exercises at the end of this unit. Um, these all contain uh, possessive pronouns, and these are the very simple ones, just to make sure that you can tell which possessive pronoun is which. So translate these ones, and then these are slightly more um, complicated because they have more cases. I think these are actually all in the, these are all in the nominative. But then these all, these have different cases, nominative, accusative, dative, genitive. So you'll have to really pay attention to the case to um, translate correctly what's going on, who, who is doing what and who possesses what, etc. So those are the exercises for the end of this chapter, and um, I will see you in the next video. Bis bald. Tschüss. Auf Wiedersehen.